Hey guys, Harley from Cricket Fanatics Magazine here with another episode of The Daily Show. This is where I talk about major talking points in South African cricket. So on Friday, I made a proposal to Cricket South Africa. I was talking about how we're going to get out of this frenzy and this turmoil that is happening in South African cricket at the moment. And I proposed a tournament or a week where from the Culture Camp squad, I created three teams that will go head to head against each other in a 3TC tournament, inverted commas, a 3TC tournament that we would like to see as fans. Now, there has been nothing reported about this actually taking place. This is just a proposal from my side to Cricket South Africa because I think the only way we can unite as a fan base is if cricket is played on our TV screens once again or via live stream. As you can see in the headline of today's video, we're talking about what is the priority for the Proteus. So obviously with the T20 World Cup that was supposed to happen this year being postponed, we shift our attention to the one that's going to happen a year later. 2021's T20 World Cup. So the understanding from my perspective is that this will be the priority for the Proteus. Now, I don't know if you guys agree with me, so get your comments in the comment section below. But let's look at that squads once again that I proposed for my 3TC tournament that I proposed. Because so, I think that the, this squad is going to give us a good indication of who's going to be in that T20 side or who's going to be in the final Proteus squads. Now, this particular squad was obviously spread out quite well. So there were some players that are considered as four-day cricketers, and there are some one-day cricketers here as well, as well as some T20 cricketers. But I think that this particular squad, just from looking at it and analyzing it, it seems that they've been thinking about the T20 game quite often. Now, on Team 3, you will see Vian Mulder's name. He's not in the original squad. But for the sake of the tournament that I wanted to propose to Cricket South Africa, I had to fly in another seeming all-rounder. And if I had the choice, I would fly in Vian Mulder because there were only 32 names that were given in that squad. So this is my understanding and this is why I think that the Proteus are thinking about T20s as a priority. As you can see, some of the names over here that are part of the squad, we have the likes of John John Smuts. We have the likes of... Someone like Sasanda Mungala in this side as well points towards a T20 focus. But I think I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to pick or to have a conversation about who our best T20 players are. So in Team 1, you will see I've put a lineup together. Now, obviously, for this particular game that we played on Friday, I mixed it up. I try to balance the bowlers and spread them out in every team. So you will see Kahi Surabada, Anik Nokia, and Lungi Ngidi. They've been spread out. And I think they are our three best seamers in the country. So if I was going to build a 15-man squad for a T20 competition, this is what it would be. So the reason why I'd pick someone like Temba Bavuma is that I think that Temba Bavuma at the top of the order with Quentin de Kock is quite dangerous. But I'll have to pick Yanaman Malan in the squad as well because I think that he has this attacking ability to be able to turn it on and turn it off whenever he pleases. And we saw how he played, especially in the ODI format. But we know he has the ability to be able to play the T20 format as well. We've seen him play for the Blitz and now while he played there. And we also saw that he has the knack to be able to punish the bowlers. So I think those are my three openers that I will juggle with. In the number three position, it's it's a tricky one because will Faf Duplessis play or not? The only reason he wasn't in the culture squad or the culture camp was because of his wife giving birth to their second child. So that's the only reason he was left out. But we know his ability in the IPL and what he's done in the IPL for the Chennai Super Kings, actually winning the, the competition with them as well. So I think in the number three position, you could kind of give it to Riza Hendricks or Faf Duplessis. I think that that would be our best number threes. Number, in the number four position, we know that South Africa believes and the fan base believes that Rassi van der Dissen is possibly our best number four in the T20 format and in the ODI format. So I'm going to give it to Rassi van der Dissen, kind of our replacement for A.B. de Villiers. Now I'm bringing up A.B. de Villiers' name at the right time here because there is talk about him coming back into play for South Africa. We'll have to see how he performs now in the IPL. When RCB was talking about the Proteas arriving, they spoke about the likes of A.B. de Villiers 
Chris Morris, and as well as Dale Stain, because those are the three that are going to be a part of the RCP setup right now. When it comes to the number five position, I think that it's a bit tricky because we can decide if we want to go with someone that is a bit of a, that is the wicket keeper batsman, because we have the likes of Kyle Verena, Handy Klaus, and Rudy Second that are wicket keeper batsmen currently in that squad. But I think that they'd give it to Andy Klaassen in the T20 format. We know that he can perform well in that particular format. And we know that he can be very destructive. I think that someone like Kyle Verena needs to ease himself in. And I think his selection will depend on how he performs if the Proteus give him more opportunities in the shorter formats down the line. But if the Proteus are going to play it safe like I think they will do, they will probably go with David Miller in the number five position. With the number six position, it's a quite tricky one. So number six is all about having someone that can do a little bit of both. I think that in the T20 format, spinners are key. And spinners have shown that they their ability over and over and over again. So we have the likes of John John Smudge, who's a spinning batsman. So if you can find a batsman that can bat number six, who can bat high up the order, and can spin the ball, we hit the jackpot. John John Smudge, George Linder, Senaran Mutasami are all spinning all-rounders. We also have Bjorn Fortein who can hold the bat too. We saw how he played in the four-day franchise series for the Lions when he scored over 180 runs. So we know he can hold the bat too. But I think that for the sake of building a winning side, we need to have that spinning all-rounder in the side. It would just be an amazing opportunity. So I'm going to give it to John John Smuts and slash George Linder, put him in the squad as well, because I think we're going to need a backup for that particular position so that it's a type of formation and a type of style that we can play throughout a tournament like the World Cup. The number seven position, this is where we're going to start talking about picking our best bowlers and a bowlers that can hold their bat too. So a guy like Dwayne Pretorius is exactly that, but so is Andile Pechlequayo. But I think that with regards to Andile Pechlequayo and Dwayne Pretorius, Andile is a, the better bowler of the two, and Dwayne is the better batsman of the two. So I think having both of them in the squad is ideal and vital. Andile is an amazing bowler, especially in the middle overs, just to throttle the opposition and just to keep them in check. Then I think our bowlers or our speedsters can be picked themselves. Likes of Kahi Surabada, Lungin Giri, and of course Anik Nokia. I think you can pick any all three of them and have an amazing, quick, and accurate attack. We saw Anik Nokia's ability. I hope he gets a chance in the IPL as well, but we saw Anik Nokia's ability in the Mzanzi Super League. Epic bowler, great bowler, dangerous bowler for the Cape Town Blitz. Kahi Surabada picks himself. Um, there is some questions over how good he is in the T20 format, but in the IPL, he's phenomenal. He pulled out the tournament, and yet he was still one of the top wicket takers in the tournament. So he has the ability to do so. He hasn't really showed it in Proteus Colors in the T20 format yet, but I trust Kahi Surabare. Guy's a superstar. Lungin Giri picks himself as well. So we know that Lungin Giri is the perfect person to bowl at the death and to really clamp that the batsman at the top of the order as well to open the bowling with someone like Kahi Sorovada. Then spinners. We obviously have to brace Shamsi, the best T20 bowler that we currently have. And we have to have, obviously check if Imran Tahir is going to come back for that World Cup, if he's still going to be okay to play. Otherwise, we have guys like Keshav Maharaj and Bjorn Fontaine. And I think Bjorn Fontaine tips Keshav Maharaj in the T20 format. He's bowled amazingly for the Paul Rocks. He was key in that side. I think Bjorn, having Bjorn Fontaine in the, in the side is key because he can also bat so if I had to pick between Tabrez and Bjorn, it would be a very difficult race. But I think for the sake of a deeper batting lineup, Bjorn Fortein people would favor. And for to having that, that charisma and that extra X factor and spinning ability to bamboozle the batsman, I think Tabrez Shamsi is an epic bowler as well. So obviously we're going to have to look at the bench. And I've mentioned some of the bench, bench names, like Gianaman Milan, for example. And I've mentioned someone like George Linder. If you're going to pick George Linder, John John, John Smuts over George Linder, Andile Pechlequayo as well. And then obviously you need some death bowlers. So Sisanda Magala, I would definitely put him to the side. I know we have Bjorn Hendricks as well, who's a left arm seamer. So he'll also be key in that particular lineup. But if you look at the names, you also have Lutus Apamla as a bowler as well. So picking that, that side is going to be very crucial to the success 
Maybe they will pick someone like Pat Van Bouillon. But I'm going to leave you with my squad. So guys, thanks a lot for watching and I would like to know what you guys think about this particular team and whether South Africa is going to be focusing on the T20 as a priority. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Let me know what your squads are for the T20 World Cup and let me know what you would like to see first on TV or what sort of thing you would like to see first before we get into this whole T20 World Cup debate. Guys, thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Also, don't forget to download the latest issue of our magazine. We're working hard on the next edition of the magazine, so please get the fir previous first two issues for free right now if you go to the link on our screen or in the description. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys very, very soon.